welcome to X-Ray Review. This video is about common fractures of the cervical spine. And included are going to be multiple examples of real fractures that commonly present. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. And let's begin with one of the more commonly seen fractures of the cervical spine, which is a compression fracture. And this is a 48-year-old female who was just involved in a high-speed motor vehicle accident. And let's take a look at this compression fracture. Radiographically, there's three things that we're looking for with a compression fracture. First is a loss of anterior vertebral body height. The middle and posterior vertebral columns can also be involved in more serious injuries, but the loss of anterior vertebral body height is one of the key characteristics. Sometimes you'll see in an acute injury a step defect, and in a step defect is an abrupt angle at the anterior aspect of the vertebral body which represents some type of acute fragmentation or deformity of the bone uh, due to that compression injury. And thirdly is a zone of condensation. And a zone of condensation is an area of impacted sclerotic bone where the compression of bone has compacted in so it appears denser on the x-ray. And this can also be a sign of an acute compression injury. A couple other radiographic features to look for are any potential retrolisthesis or retropulsion. In this case, at C5, you can see that the vertebral body has moved posterior, and due to the proximity of the spinal canal and spinal cord, uh, this can have severe neurologic complications. Another indirect sign of an acute compression fracture would be prevertebral soft tissue swelling. And surprisingly, you don't always see this, but when present, it can be very helpful in finding or determining the acuity of a compression fracture. In this case, we have a 27-year-old male who was recently involved in a jet ski accident. And if you take a look at the cervical spine, let's look closer at C7. And radiographically, we can see a loss of anterior vertebral body height a radiolucency extending through both vertebral end plates, no adjacent prevertebral soft tissue swelling, and even though this is an acute fracture. This is a 56 year old female who presented with no specific trauma, however, she has a previous history of breast cancer. And let's take a closer look at C5. And you'll notice a loss of anterior and central vertebral body height of C5, an overall decreased density in cortical thinning of the C5 vertebral body, possible adjacent prevertebral soft tissue swelling, as well as a significant retrolisthesis. And this is a pathologic compression fracture, which is uh, any type of trauma or force on a weakened or pathologic bone due to the underlying uh, breast cancer metastasis, so pathologic compression fracture. In this case, we have a 25-year-old female who has a subacute injury about a week ago. And let's take a look at C5. Radiographically, you'll notice a loss of anterior vertebral body height, cortical disruption at the inferior vertebral end plate, a retrolisthesis, this is just the overlying facet joint, not a fracture, so don't be fooled by that. And um, no adjacent prevertebral soft tissue swelling. And this again was a subacute injury as proven on MR. In this case, we have a 33 year old male who presented with pain in the cervical thoracic junction following a squatting injury. And if we zoom in to that region, and you can visualize a fracture of the C7 spinous process with suboptimal apposition of that distal fragment. On the frontal view, there is visualization of two spinous processes at that C7 level, and that's due to the clay shoveler's fracture that we see here. And a clay shoveler's fracture is usually caused by a forceful hyperflexion or hyperextension injury, some type of direct blunt force trauma, 
and uh, it's luckily a stable injury as far as cervical fractures go but this is a good example of a clay shoveler's fracture. In this case we have a 26 year old male who about a year ago had a blunt force trauma to the lower neck. So if we zoom into that area you should observe two non-union fracture deformities of the C6 and C7 spinous processes which are old clay shoveler fractures. In this case we have a 30 year old male with a history of a motor vehicle accident about six months ago. And you should notice this last example of a clay shoveler's fracture and this is a non-union fracture deformity older in etiology. This patient is a 36 year old female who presented with severe neck pain following a motor vehicle accident. So as you go through your search pattern and look for abnormalities, let's zoom in to C4. And you'll notice that the anterior inferior corner of that C4 vertebral segment looks like it's fractured through. And this is an avulsion injury called an extension teardrop fracture. And this is usually due to a forced extension of the neck and that avulses off that anterior inferior corner. And extension teardrop fractures um, are usually going to be stable in the flexion position, unstable in the extension as that ALL or anterior longitudinal ligament uh, can be ruptured or damaged. So um, flexion teardrop injuries are very severe and both of these need a neurosurgical consultation um, as soon as possible. This is a 63 year old male who had a recent motor vehicle accident and as you take a look at this lateral cervical view, you'll notice at C1, you should observe an oblique fracture extending through the posterior arch of C1. And this posterior arch of C1 fracture usually occurs when the head is hyperextended and then you have compression of C1 in between the occiput and the prominent C2 spinous process. And this is a common fracture of C1. This patient is a 49 year old female who approximately six months ago was involved in a mountain bike accident and had a pretty bad injury resulting in this fracture deformity that we can see here. And this is referred to as a hangman's fracture or a bilateral pedicle fracture of C2. And this often results in a traumatic spondylolisthesis of C2 where C2 translates anterior in relation to C3. And this is an immediate medical emergency as well as a neurosurgical consultation. This patient is a 20 year old male who was also involved in a high speed motor vehicle accident and resulted in this fracture you're seeing here at C2. And this is a hangman's fracture with a traumatic spondylolisthesis as a result of a forceful hyperextension and distraction injury. This is a 21 year old male who was a passenger in a high speed motor vehicle accident. And let's see if you can find a fracture. And there is an acute fracture of the first rib. And this is a common injury to see uh, following a motor vehicle accident on cervical spine images. So always keep an eye out for this area because of uh, the patient's seatbelt. If they're wearing it, um, fractures can occur in this region. And just one more example to always keep your eye open uh, on a cervical spine image for fractures. So let's see if you can find the fracture here in this 18 year old male. And while it's subtle, it's real. There is a fracture of the clavicle here, just no significant offset. And keep in mind, that fractures of the clavicle, fractures of the ribs can easily be seen and missed on cervical spine images. So always keep your eyes out for these uh, other areas. 
All right, and thanks for making it this far. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing some of these common fractures of the cervical spine. There's obviously a lot more fractures in the cervical spine that can occur, and I'll make some videos on individual uh, fractures. So if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, and any questions or comments, please put them below. Thanks again.